Welcome back to another uh, episode of the OHIO Podcast. I am Buckeye Boggs. That man over there is the wild man, Chris Wilds. And you are you. And we are thankful to have each and every single one of you back with us again tonight for another live edition of the OHIO Podcast. Brought to you by the collegehuddle.com that's right everybody head on over to the collegehuddle.com check out ourselves and 69 of our friends and family over at the college huddle where you can find all these other great podcasts like i said 69 of them uh, from other college teams and great articles written by myself and other great writers like this guy over here who wrote a great article about the spring game. You know, Chris, I really enjoyed your article. It was, dare I say, positive and encouraging. Yeah, not something we're used to hearing from me. I loved it. Yeah, no, you were right. Like, no, but here's, in all honesty, Chris, before I ju- di- dive into your article, I do need to do this. We are also the official Ohio State podcast of Fan Sided Scarlet and Game. You can check us out over there. You can find us on YouTube at, at the Ohio Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at the Ohio Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at the Ohio Pod. So go check us out, everybody. Before you forget, hit the thumbs up button. Give us a like. We appreciate that very, very much. We appreciate all of our official members, some of which are here tonight, like Jay Thompson. Jay Thompson's here tonight. And Jay. You and your beautiful family joined us out there at the, the tailgate yesterday. It was great seeing you. We also were joined by this guy right here, Derek, from the Football Fanatics podcast. He swung by, uh, came all the way from Indianapolis to uh, view the game. It was great seeing him at the game as well. And uh, just a lot of things going on. You know who we didn't see at the at our tailgate, though? JR. We we didn't see Jr. at the tailgate, which was just. What was up with that? I I don't know. I it's it was because you know what I found out he was there. Jr. was no, he there. Wasn't. Yes, he was. He was there. I'm trying to add him to the scene. This sounds. This is really bad right now because I'm like, wait a minute. He should be up on the uh, on the thing, but he's not there. Okay, give me one second, Jr. Hold on. Um. Anyways, oh, look, look who I found hanging out. There he is. Hey, guys. Uh, Where is hey, he? good to see you. All right, Chris. So you wrote a great article, and I want you to talk a little bit about your article because I think you, were, you hit the nail on the head, so go for it. So a big part of yesterday, Eric, was, you know, just the, the atmosphere surrounding the game. There was an air, and, and I, I referred to it as something different, and it really was. When you think about spring games in general, you don't typically have the kind of hype, the kind of buildup that we saw going into this game. Uh, we got there at, what, 7 o'clock, a little before 7 in the morning? Was it that early? I thought yeah, because we were sending out text messages at a quarter after 7, letting people know where we were, where we'd already set up at. Okay. So we were there just before seven in the morning. Eric, the lots were filling up already. They were. Before seven in the morning for a noon kickoff spring game. <laughs> we weren't the only ones out there tailgating. There was tailgaters all over the place. Uh huh. It it had a game day feel to it. Um and, and I think that was enhanced by the fact that that you had Fox out there for the first nationally televised spring game in college football history. I think not only the Buckeye fans, not only the players, not only the coaches, but everyone right right now realizes that there is something very special going on in Columbus. And, I mean, without even diving into the game, which, by the way, we talked about what we wanted to see, and we saw a lot of what we wanted to yeah, see. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna dissect that a lot tonight. So, but just in general, just the dynamic of uh, of the the game itself, the the feel of of what was going on, and, and we had a great view of it from our absolutely awesome seats uh, that we will not share the location of with anybody else. <laughs> we don't let yeah. our secret out. I don't, 80,000, 
I want to say because I've been to every spring game since 2015. There was one that almost touched 100, wasn't there? That was 2015. Yeah, I would say this was the largest crowd we've had since 2015. Yeah, it was the year after the Natty. That's my guess. Um, Brian, how's the QBs look? What's the depth chart look like? We're gonna get into all of that. Uh, yeah, this guy, Ryan Wakerham. Sorry, I missed you guys Saturday. Kids, things going on. This guy always has an epic tailgate, and he didn't even come to ours. The one time- I gave him the business about it too, Eric. Ryan. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the patch is going crazy tonight, guys. Uh, yeah, Derek said seats were pretty amazing. Yeah, there's there's some secret seats in the shoe if you know where to go. And so we know where to go. What can we say? Um, anyways, those, that was great. Nick Quint, hey, what's up, guys? I was one of the 80,000 there yesterday. Man, you should stop by the tailgate, brother. We tailgated before. And after. Tailgated after. It was awesome. Longer after they anticipated since we couldn't get the match light charcoal to light. Took That's a little right. while to get it going. So, uh, anyways, it was it was a lot of fun. JR, you were there. What were your thoughts, man? Initial thoughts of the spring game yesterday. Yeah, so it was pretty special for me. It was the first uh, time that my kids and my wife were in the shoe. So, that was a really, really cool experience uh, just for them to be able to see it, for them to be able to experience it. Um, my daughter kicked like the guys in front of us so many times. So part of the game was me feeling bad that she kept kicking them. And the other part of the game was actually watching it and enjoying it. But I mean, we sat up high and we thought, well, you know, hopefully there won't be a whole lot of people around us. Cause we have kids and stuff like that, man. They filled in real quick right after the game started. I mean, I was astonished at the crowd. I wasn't at the one that had a hundred K, but Man, I'll tell you what, the crowd was there. It was awesome. Uh, and just a great day, too. I was watching some other spring games like uh, like Ole Miss and Penn State. They got to do stuff to get people to come to their spring games. They got to do stuff on the field. You know, Ole Miss brought in Joey Chestnut for a like, halftime hot dog eating contest and stuff like that. Not at Ohio State, guys. At Ohio State, they come. And uh, guess what? Those fans up north come as well because they know what's coming to them this year. And they got to get in the bragging while they can uh, because they had to cheat for it. But <clears throat> that's uh, that's another story for another day. I saw the, the pictures of the Michigan fans there. And I was like, man, how desperate do you have to be to have to go to a, your rival's spring game? I Yeah. We had some right beside us, actually. Very nice people, by the way. I'm sure they were nice. Did, did you really? The guy in the Detroit Lions shirt was a Michigan's fan. Oh, over at the tailgate. Yeah. yeah. He actually, I don't think he went in. I think he stayed out. Did he? Yeah, I think he stayed out and guarded the I have the a little bit more respect for that then, to go and just troll the tailgate. Yeah, but drink. <laughs> his family was, his family's Buckeye His family fans, was yeah. Ohio State fans. Yeah. There was like two or three of them that I think were family visiting from out of town, but very, very nice folks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just house divided situation there. But no, I know, I, I know the picture wife, that JR's talking about. And my wife got in a fight with somebody. So it was like a full game, you know? Like Did she win? So many people there. Well, they just argued with each other. You know, that's how. Come on. Another, it was another mom. So You didn't get her to throw down? No, just a whole lot of bickering back and forth. And I said, go, 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 go. We don't need this. Go, 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 go. I'd like to actually get in the game. Go, go, go. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Uh, let's get into some of these chats here real fast. Uh, Jeremiah Yoder, wasn't that sweet to see our Buckeyes again? As much as my scarlet and gray fever was apparent, I can't even imagine how bad that will get once the August rolls around again. Yeah, it's only going to get – I'm telling you, dude, the the hype train for the season done left the station. Again, and can after, we just say – oh, go ahead, Eric. And after what we saw yesterday, the hype train's getting bigger. Can, can we just say that we actually saw – some offensive line play yesterday. Yeah, we're we, we're going to talk about it. Yeah, That's, Nick that Quint, was that was exciting to me. What did you think of the TTUN fans at the game? I was sitting in the Ohio State end zone side, and he walked by, and everyone booed him, and he kept egging everyone on. Yeah, that's just it's just a troll. That's just a big giant troll. Um, I bet Mrs. Jr. could hurt some folks. <laughs> she could. You get that mom energy going, protect her kids. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's get um let's get into some of this a little bit. For how long now, Chris? I have been 
I've been riding the offensive line. I mean, I saddled them boys a year I, ago. It's been two years at least that we've been two, two and a half years we've been really riding this line. We came away from the spring game, and I remember the sitting in the tailgate. We, we recorded this. Sitting yeah. in the tailgate after the spring game last year, and I told all of you, if the offensive line doesn't get any better, this season's not going to go the way we want it. And despite how bad the offensive line was last year, they still won 10, 11 straight games to start the season. And that's with a Honda as your quarterback. This offensive line yesterday looked physical. They looked competent. Um, they started with Carson Hensman at guard. Um, yeah. Seth McLaughlin. His natural position, center. by the way. Yeah, exactly. Seth McLaughlin was at center. So that answered that question for us. Second drive with the one with the ones. We then saw Tegra Shabola look at guard. And guess what? He did well. He did really well. He picked up the he picked up pass blocking. He got out a lot on some of those uh sweeps and his he looked like he could move. Um yeah. I don't I don't think we're gonna have a problem at that right guard position. Um the offensive line, the starting offensive line. Now when we got into the the second string a little bit, they they were having a little bit more trouble. But even the third string offensive line at the end of the game was was moving the football pretty well. Yeah. Our our running game. I'm not overly worried. Even with Dallin even. Now, granted, we do have to remember for the first half a good chunk of the game, first quarter, this was two hand tap. But at the same time, I do feel that it looked right. Uh, you know, I think we got some running backs who are gonna break some break some big plays. I think we got some offensive linemen who are going to open some holes. Uh, man, Quinshawn, when he hits a hole, does he not hit hard? Wow. He hits the hole hard. He he has one th- thing in mind, and that is just beating everyone else down. Field. You know who he reminded me of? Let's see. Zeke, let's have it. Zeke Elliott. Yeah. One cut and go. Yes. And if you aren't, if you're not in position, he's going to make you look bad. Yeah, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed watching him run. I'll tell you who else surprised me was um the third the third string running back. Well Pe- Peoples looked good. Oh uh Sam uh Peoples ran hard, man. Yeah, yes. he ran I he ran like it. he was running for a job, didn't he? Oh yeah. But uh Sam Williams Dixon is fast, brother. <laughs> oh yeah. He is fast. Uh our running backs are going to be just fine. And with that, with the improvement of the offensive line, I'm I'm feeling really good about this team now, guys. Because those were two things I was – well, the offensive line was what I was really worried about. Now, let's stay on the offensive side of things. Emeka Egbuka reminded everybody, JR, that he is still going to be a first-round draft pick next year. Right? Yeah. That, that oh, what yeah. you I was, I was hey, kid, hold my man. beer. You know, <laughs> I was and I was the one telling people last year, like guys, even if he's hurt, he's going to the draft. He's still going to be a first round pick as long as he's healthy at the combine. Because every single one of those drills that they do with like the speed and agility and stuff like that, guess what? He's going to be first because the dude just has another level. The way that he's able to move his hips, the way that he's able to ra- run those routes, and the foot speed that he has. I mean, there, there is. I, I mean, I, I haven't watched every single LSU game, so maybe you know Malik Neighbors is a little bit better. But like the way that his foot speed is and the way that he is able to cut. I don't think there's another receiver in college football this year that was able to cut and have the foot speed that he was able to have when he was healthy. I think people forgot about it when he got hurt because he wasn't as quick and he did drop some balls toward the end of the year, which is frustrating. But at the end of the day, that's some of the stuff you can't teach and you, you draft because it's, it's really, really good. Yeah. Um, Oh, I also want to make one more comment. Go for it. The blocking, which O-line, great job to them. But if you watch, those wide receivers were blocking too. And that was the piece that I – there were multiple times where if Trey didn't get, you know, one hand tapped or two hand tapped, whatever, thudding, whatever they called it, man, he would have been gone. He would have been gone on on probably three or four different runs. So, guys, 
I was a little discouraged when I saw Will Howard never really throwing past 20 yards. But, guys, we might have way more explosive run plays this year than we have <laughs> passing plays because both Quinshawn and Travion are, are home run threats whenever they touch the ball if everybody's blocking, which everybody was blocking in the spring game. Brian Oberst, offensive line looks improved but still needs to work. By the way, good to see you at the uh, tailgate yesterday, Brian. Um, yes, they still need to improve. There's no doubt about that. But at least they looked competent and at least they looked like they know what they're doing. And and they looked aggressive yesterday. I think some of the, what we saw last year early on, the reason why they looked so timid is they just didn't know maybe what they were doing. And that comes with two things. Number one, I think experience. And number two, I think that there is a clear offensive like voice now. Yes. And I think that that has solidified this offensive line in what they're trying to do. Um, I can't I can't express enough how much Chip Kelly I think has improved this offensive line. I'm not saying he's he has everything to do with it, but he has a lot to do with it, right? Well, they have confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you watch them out there; they are confident in what they're doing, especially Donnie Jackson and Seth McLaughlin. Those are the two guys that are going to carry this offensive line this year if they're going to do great things. Because both those guys, they have the confidence you need. Uh, this, this is what Chris has been saying for a while, Jeremiah. Yeah, he's been saying there's it could pop, be possible that we have two one thousand yard rushers in the backfield if they stay healthy. Yeah. Speaking of the backfield, who didn't love seeing three running backs in the backfield to start the game? A little T. A little T, T formation. Man, dude, Penn State was running that all year last year. And I literally thought to myself when we got Quinshawn, I was like, I wonder if we'll win some wing T, maybe on the goal line in the red zone or something like that. And then Chip Kelly comes out with it right away. I was like, oh, Chip, you know what you're doing, dude. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, tight ends. Um, G. Scott is going to be the number one tight end. It, to me, it's evident. Now, I heard Jelani that he might may take have been it. injured yesterday. What? Was that? He was on the bike a lot after that first couple drives. So I, I think yeah. he might have tweaked, tweaked something, something or pulled something. But uh, it, it was evident to me that G is G is the number one guy. But Jelani, yes. yeah, he's 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 a uh, he's uh he's pushing. He's pushing. Um now let's talk about quarterback play. I want to say this is a this is a legitimate two horse race. Agree or disagree? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ju Julian saying showed yesterday that, that he he's a, a freshman. freshman. <laughs> yes. I think the future, and I, I mentioned this in the article. I think the future is very bright at quarterback for Ohio State. I think there are two young men in there who can are going to really compete next year and be at another level next year. But right now, it is definitely Brown and Howard. Keen Holtz, we'll talk about later in the program. Yeah, we're going to talk about him next. Let's just talk about him. All right. Okay. Lincoln Keen Holtz. Um, why did he play so much yesterday, JR? Oh, he needs it. He needs to play a lot. He needs to get those reps. He needs to improve. I mean, this was his first spring. He didn't do spring ball. Last year, and it shows. I mean, Julian Sayan's first spring, Aaron Nolan's first spring, Lincoln's first spring. And at the end of the day, he needs to be able to get those reps and do what he needs to do to improve. And um, maybe he could run a little bit less. He's dynamic as a runner. I trust him as a runner. He's a really good runner. But he's going to learn to to read the defense a little bit more. And, uh, you know, he's got to be able to throw to his guys a little bit more accurately. I, I have confidence he can do it, but it was evident on – on Saturday that, you know, he's not nearly as close as maybe some people would have thought before. Do you think he sticks around? I hope so. Okay. I don't think so, but I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Will Howard and Devin Brown, um, this is going to be 2023 all over again in the off season. Um, there's going to be a there's going to be a quarterback battle. I mean, just buckle up, buckle up. It's going to happen again. And, and even if Day knows he's not going to, even if Day knows he's not going to say anything, 
until the end because he can't afford to lose either of those two guys right now. Buckle up. I'm, it, it's and, and now let's be honest. I thought both of them at times had some good things they did yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I think times they both looked a little rough yesterday. Um, Ryan Day's frustrated, Chris. He is. I he, he's him. been spoiled. I, I I heard it in his voice. See, we all were there, so we didn't get to see what all of you on television saw with the whole interviewing with uh, uh, what's his nuts from Fox. Um, Joel Clap. Joel Clap. So when I went home, got home last night, I watched it, and Joel Clap's talking with Ryan. And you can hear it in his voice. Ryan's a little bit frustrated with the fact that the quarterbacks aren't reading things as quickly as what C.J. Stroud did. And you're right, Chris. Ryan's been been spoiled with C.J. Stroud, Dwayne Haskins, Justin, uh, Fields. Justin Fields. And I think last year's uh, Honda McCord experience has led, led, led Ryan Day to where we're at today. And he wants one of these two guys to get to the next level. And here's and I wasn't going to go here this now, but let's go ahead and do it because we're going to talk defense in just a second, and then we got everything we got to do before Jr. leaves. I don't have to leave tonight. Great, I don't we'll have take practice. I don't have uh, shows on Sunday night anymore. Oh, you don't? Yeah, it's just G five guys. Beautiful. I love how you plan things. All right. Then I'm going to take my time. <laughs> what I was going to say, though, was that the success of the 2024 Ohio State Buckeyes, I believe, hinges on one thing. If Buckeyes are going to win a national championship, then either Will Howard or Devin Brown, either one, will have to take that next step as a quarterback. I think Will Howard is probably closer to taking that step given the experience he has had and where he's at in his career. But where we're at right now as a program, we have everything in place. We said the offensive line has to be good enough. They're going to be good enough. We've got every skill position covered too deep. The defense is probably the best we've had, if not better than what we had in 2019. What we need is a quarterback that takes the next step. And if that happens, Ohio State's going to win the national championship, barring injury. Agree or disagree with my assessment, guys? I mean, I I, I think you need a good quarterback. I don't think you need C.J. Stroud. I don't think you need Justin Fields to win a national championship because I think you have a running back duo that you've never had before uh, under Ryan Day. And I do think that Chip Kelly is a factor in making that, you know, as good as it needs to be. Do we need better than what we saw in the spring game yesterday? Yes. Yeah, we need them to get better. Uh, I totally agree with that. I just don't think we need C.J. Stroud. I don't think we need, you know, the most accurate generational <laughs> passer, uh, you know, that, that Ohio State has seen in a long, long time. Um, so I'm not going to put that pressure on him, but, but I can see where you're coming from. Yes, he does. They both need to improve, uh, because one of them is going to have to be better in order for this team to win a national championship. What we need is a serviceable quarterback. We need somebody who can go out, go out there. He doesn't have to necessarily win us games. He just can't lose us games. But wasn't that McCord? No, was it? Because McCord was, he would lose no. his games if he had the he chance. He would lose his games. Penn uh, State game almost lost that game for us by losing the ball in the pocket. The way he yes. moves around. I mean, there there were so many things about McCord that he got lucky throughout the year because the defense saved him. He yes. lost us. He lost us the Maryland game, and the defense brought him back and made it serviceable. I mean, uh, I know everybody loves the McCord win eleven game step, but you, you, he did you know, though. He didn't. He didn't win 11 games. The defense did. I'll give him credit for winning us one game, and that was no game, and Harrison. he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> right, because he should have threw picks. Brian, New York. Picks. 
Heard from a few in attendance yesterday was that yesterday was McCord like at the quarterback position. Yeah, it was kind of. You know what, though? Let's not forget. It wasn't all that long ago that we saw Justin Fields have a really bad spring game. Oh, we did. That was, that was, he, his first game in the shoe was ugly in in the spring game. And you look, um, yeah. Yeah. One of my, this is one of my favorite things, Jeremiah. Yes. We won the 2002 national championship game with Craig Krenzel. This is true. And you know what Craig Krenzel did a lot is he wasn't afraid to tuck the ball and run. And you know what we, what I saw yesterday was a whole heck of a lot of read option going on. Yeah. Out of everybody, out of everybody. Oh yeah. That's a, that is, if you can't run the read option, I don't think you're going to be a quarterback in Chip Kelly's offense. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, Running the ball, I thought the quarterbacks all looked decent running the ball. Um, I mean, as far as if you were just talking about the, the actual running and the read option, oh, my God, if we were just basing it off that, put Aaron Nolan in there right now. You know, he did awesome in the read option. Uh, will Buck, interesting comment. Brown didn't beat out Honda. He's not beating out Howard. Howard will be a game manager and run power. I don't disagree with that. I don't either. Only thing I would say is that Brown did get injured and lost a little bit of time. And McCord, you know, I mean, we've said the story with his dad and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I, I don't like the comparison of Brown didn't beat out McCord because I think there were other things there. than. But but, he, but he's right at the same time. Like, I like Brown. I really no. want Brown to be successful. But Brown hasn't shown us anything to say, like, this guy has to be the starter. Guys, tell me this. As far as the actual passing went, I thought Devin's passes looked better for the most part um, than most of the other guys as far as the, the timing and the rhythm. Uh, uh, him and Will were, I think, almost identical in a lot of ways. Will Will had a beautiful pass in the end zone that should have been pass interference. That didn't oh, they, there was a couple of no calls down in yeah. the end zone that uh, – uh, Devin Brown's uh, touchdown pass. Even Ryan Day said it was late yeah. on, te- on the telecast. Um, I mean, it went right over the guy's head. He's just lucky the guy didn't. I mean, it was it was JJ McCarthy throw to the end zone situation where the guy just didn't have his head up to knock it down. Yeah, um, yeah. Brian points that out as well. But Ryan Ryan Wickerham, just wait until Sane gets more experience and gets bigger and stronger. His year next year probably he he needs he needs a year. Yeah, that was that was physical. evident. That was that was evident to me. He needs he needs a season. This summer and this fall is going to be critical to his development um, as he prepares. Um, Brian Oberst, Air Nolan shined in my opinion, and he is fast. Air Nolan, this. Okay, what we saw Saturday is why I liked his film so much in high school. Right there. I but at like the Aaron same Nolan time, the best, I felt like Aaron Nolan had the best timing out of any of the quarterbacks. He, he, he didn't did he look good? He did. He looked very he, good. But let's also remember, Eric, who was he playing against and who were Devin and uh, – Yeah, third string versus know. first and second string. Yeah. yeah. But still, some, some of that's – not always the defense, like the timing and hitting the players in stride. No, no, that, like that that was good. But but I see what you're saying too, Chris, yeah. And I'll say this. Nobody ran the read option as Absolutely smooth not. as he did. Yeah. He he faked me out twice where I was – I didn't even know he had the b- football still. Um, he's going to be a weapon. And I remember uh, saying um, – forget who I was sitting next to at the time that, that I made this comment. If he leaves and goes somewhere else, he's going to be a problem. He's good. I'll tell I don't you want what. To, I don't want to see him leave. I, I don't do either. not want to see him leave. And, and I really, I thought, I thought coming in that it was destined that we were going to lose another quarterback. You know, I think we're going to lose Lincoln. I thought for sure we were losing. I'm not so sure. Aaron Nolan went out there and showed that he can compete with anybody. He's got a legitimate shot at this thing next year. They were talking on the radio that they would not be surprised if Georgia don't call Aaron Nolan. Home state. Oh, if I was Kirby Smart, I'd be on the phone with him right now. <laughs> Tampa uh, all. Brian Obers. Interesting. Dallas Hayden never saw the field. I don't think Dallas Hayden's with the team anymore. He's not on campus. Yeah, he's not with the team. 
He's gone. All right, let's dive into our letter grades, um, guys, and then we're going to give uh, hand out some Buckeye leaves. All right, let's start with the offense first. Um, so leading rusher with 11 carries and 78 yards and a touchdown was Sam Williams Dixon. Um, believe it or not, Aaron Nolan was second on the team in rushing, five carries, 42 yards. James Peoples looked really good, 10 carries, uh, 40 yards as well. Uh, and a touchdown, and uh, Quinn Junkins, four carries, 31 yards. Uh, let's see, Travion Henderson, four carries, 18 yards yesterday. In uh, receiving, uh, if you had David Adolph as your leading receiver on the team uh, in your bingo card, pat yourself on the back, four catches, 50 yards. Emeka Egbuka, four catches, 47 yards, and the sickest one-handed grab on the sideline uh, that will be made in spring and anywhere. Brennan Schramm, Schramm. Schram, Schram. 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 three catches, 31 yards, and a tutty uh, for the day. And he's a walk-on, is he not? And and the, and the sweet, he takes the cake this year for the sweetest white man afro. Okay. Uh, let's see. Kojo Antwi, two catches, 26 yards. Uh, James Peoples, three catches, 23 yards out of the back backfield yesterday. Uh, and for all of those who were wondering about what uh, Jeremiah, J.J. Smith, uh, Optimus Prime would do, two catches, 12 yards yesterday, and uh, was targeted a couple times in the end zone. Good defense on him, by the way. Well, those it, were your offensive stats yesterday. What letter grade would you give the offense, Chris? You know, the running game was strong. We did have four turnovers. Uh, we had a on, on the opening snap of uh, we'll call it Team B. We fumbled the snap, so there was definitely some room for improvement. I'm going to go with a B, B minus, B B minus, B minus. I think we got a lot of room for improvement there, but I did see a lot of positives. Jr. I'm going to go B plus. I think that the quarterbacks did okay. Uh, I think that the wide receivers did well. I, th I felt like the routes were one run well by the starting guys and the, even the backup guys, you can see why Brian Hartline's a really good wide receiver coach yeah. guys. I mean, even the backup guys were doing really well out there. Uh, obviously they're not on the same level as starters, but you know, still really good for them. Uh, and I also think that at the end of the day, if we would have saw Trevion and Quinshawn really actually run, I think I think they could have ran all over this defense, which gives me a little bit of pause about the defense. I don't know if I like that or dislike that. That's one of those things <laughs> you don't really know how to feel. Um, but you know, we're starting two new linebackers, so it's uh it's gonna be a work in progress for a little bit. But yeah, B plus for me. B minus, B plus. I guess I'll go B. <laughs> go between you guys. Um, how about the fact that we've heard so much about how the defense is dominated and they did get four turnovers yesterday, by the way, like you pointed out, Chris, but uh, the offense did move the football yesterday. And remember they at one time started to drive on their own three yard line and got, drove it all the way down and got a field goal out of it. And this was a team that uh, reportedly at the beginning of spring practice uh, couldn't couldn't get, could not move the football when they had the end zone at their backs. They would be giving up two points left and right. So um, I'll give the I'll give the offense a B. Uh, Brian Ober says B plus. Uh, Derek says B plus. Um, and that's that's what I see for letter grades in the chat for the offense. Let's flip it over to the defense here real fast. Uh, looking at the defensive statistics. Uh, leading the team with eight tackles yesterday, five solo, was linebacker C.J. Hicks. Uh, second on the team with seven was Inky Jones. I don't know who Inky is, but that's a fantastic name. Inky's a walk-on. I love it. There you go, man. Walk-on walk on Super Bowl, as uh, our boy Wargo said at the uh, tailgate yesterday. Aaron Scott Jr. had six, uh, six tackles. Uh, that's a freshman, by the way, a freshman corner. Sonny Styles. Real tackles too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because he was in there playing at the time when they they were actually tackling. Uh, Sonny Styles had six, and Edric Houston, true freshman Edric Houston, also had six. 
Um, let's see if I can find the sacks category. Let's see. Yeah, Edric Houston. There he is. Edric Houston had a sack. Mitchell Melton had a sack. Jack Sawyer had Jack a sack. Jack Sawyer had a sack. Hero Canoe had a sack. Jason Moore had a sack. And Caden Curry had a sack. Now, I want to preface this by saying some of these sacks were one-hand tap sacks. They weren't truly sacks, but, you know. You're not going to bring down Will Howard with one hand. Yeah, so That's let's let's be honest here. Although there were there was one, there was a couple times where if they wouldn't have blown the whistle on his, on a tap, we might not have the quarterback left anymore. That's so true. <laughs> you gotta you gotta be uh be uh <laughs> take it with what it is for what it is. Chris, what is your defensive letter grade yesterday? Uh yeah, I wanted a, a B plus on the defense. I thought that there was again. So a few few little uh, things that could definitely use some improvement. Obviously, they moved the ball a little bit too much. I thought that uh, Igbenosa, while in uh, midseason form, was also in midseason form as far as getting away with a few penalties. Uh, you know, just because that's the physical style of play he has. I think at times, even though he got quite a few st- uh, tackles, I thought that Sonny Styles got caught up in traffic, uh, had a little trouble, you know, shedding blocks a couple times. Um, overall, not a bad performance, but again, I still think that we can improve. Jr. your defensive letter grade from the spring game. Dude, I, I, even though I mentioned the thing about the possibility with the run, uh, the run defense, I got to give them an A, man. This is the best secondary in the nation. They showed it. Our defensive ends are five or six deep. I mean, you got Edric Hughes, you got Mitchell Melton out there. Dude was destroying oh, some Mitchell, of the offensive wow. line. Oh my gosh, the way he was playing. Uh, it didn't seem like what def- it didn't seem like it mattered what defensive tackle was in there. Hamilton, Moore, uh, Canoe, uh, all these guys. Of course, Tyleek. I mean, all these guys just going crazy. Uh, defensive line is going to be one of the best, if not the deepest in the nation. And, and I love that for Larry Johnson, being able to swap those guys in and out. Uh, I am going to love, all right, mark my words. I am going to love when there is a pass rush specialist defensive line of Mitchell Melton, Jack Sawyer, and JT and Ty Leak in the middle. You're going to see it this year. Mark my words. You're going to see Mitchell Melton out there in a pass rushing situation with Jack JT and Ty Leak, and those four and, J- and JT is going to be on the inside with Ty Leak, and he's going to destroy a guard because those guards aren't going to be able to know what to do when they get to JT. So I, I th- the defense was fantastic, so deep. I love to see it, and uh, you know I just gotta <clears throat> feel pretty good about my pick of Tim Walton as the best uh, as the uh, the best uh, assistant coach on the uh, staff after watching that because the the, the secondary is. About as deep as the defensive line, too. I don't know of any other position group in the country that calls their position coach goat. Yeah, but but they do because <laughs> they know. <laughs> so uh, you I might be onto something there, Jr. All right, you went with an A. Uh, Chris went with a B plus. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go A minus and go in the middle between you two, uh, just to keep that trend going. All right, let's check out uh, – let's look at our offensive and defensive players of the game and plays of the game. Let's go ahead and start with our offensive player of the game, Chris. Uh, man, i got to go with Quinn Sean. He was just out there. He was a beast. What, what did he average, Eric, about seven and a half a carry? It was, it was a lot. Uh, <laughs> and, and that was with and, two-hand and, tap. And that was with so. two-hand tap. You know he was going to get another yard or two per carry out of all those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was just I, – I thought he was great. JR? Yeah. Um, I think – oh, who was I thinking? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sam Williams Dickinson, just because he surprised me so much, uh, the speed that he had. Obviously, he was going against, you know, second, third stringers and stuff like that and, and walk on. So, you know, take that into account. But still, I mean, just another guy – who should be in high school, but he's out here playing in front of 80K people and just blazing by everybody super fast. I can't wait to uh, see him when he starts getting a little bit older. Maybe even this year we might see him, uh, you know, run by some guys. But, yeah, Sam Williams-Dixon, just because he surprised me the most. 
Brian Oberst uh, says Quinshawn Junkins by far, and he would broke big runs if they didn't blow the whistle. Yeah, they mm-hmm. yeah, they would have. Yes, he would have. Yeah. Um, both of you guys went with running backs. Um, I'm going to pull an Aaron. I'm going to pull an Aaron here. Do not do it. You I'm do not get the, two votes. I'm going to pick the entire offensive line. Guys, I was dogging yeah. them so bad I for an get entire on year. I okay. Can I be honest with you guys? I thought I thought we were gonna come away from the spring game doing the same thing we did last year and saying our offensive line stinks. And no one's saying that. That is a huge win for these guys, and I want to credit them. So I'm going to pick the offensive line as my offensive MVP for yesterday. Uh, let's flip over to the defensive side of things, Chris. Your defensive MVP play MVP. Man, you go so many ways with this. Yeah. Um, my instinct is to kind of pull an Eric there and go with the whole defensive line, but uh, you know I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take that way out. Um, you know what? Give me Edric. Edric had a had a big game. What did, what did we say? Six tackles. Had a sack. And a sack. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Edric. Good, right. good stat line. JR? Well, I was going to pick a defensive lineman too, but now that Eric pointed out both Chris and I picked running backs, I don't know if I can pick a defensive lineman, but uh, I, I'll give him a recognition because I think he deserves it. And I'll give a secondary guy here in a second too, but uh, Jack Sawyer, I mean, the guy had a sack, and if you were – I know you guys were at the game, so you saw it, but like – Man, he, he was on the sideline every – I mean, he it's like he was a coach on the sideline. He was up with every single guy, talking as much as he possibly could. He was he was out there with the guys, cheering them on. I mean, y- you can tell that Jack Sawyer has really embraced himself as, as the leader of this team. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he switches his number to the block O at some point uh, in the offseason and we see him with the block O just because he, he is – he is the full force leader on this team in my mind. Uh, and then if I had to go with a secondary guy, just because the secondary was so good, I won't try to steal him from you, Eric, if you're going to say him, but uh, Iggy would be uh Igmanosin would be my guy just because man, he was out there. He did not like the talk of Jeremiah Smith and the wide receivers. I think in the, no. uh, he went out there, he was a man on a mission and yeah, he probably got a few penalties, but he was a man on a mission. All right. I, that's exactly who I was going to go with. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. Um, he His stat line's one tackle, but you know what you don't see in there is how many times on they went to the fade in the corner of the end zone, and he was like, not happening. Yeah. Not happening. Um, you know, we hear all this talk about uh, Caleb Downs, and I was excited to see Caleb Downs. And you know what? At the end of the day, in that defensive backfield, which is just – the DBs are just sick, guys. I mean, yeah. the whole backfield is sick. Um, I love Iggy's play. He's a baller, dude. And he's not afraid to tell you. And I, I wa- to me, he might be the voice of the defense this year. Like, he's the guy, I think, that is not going to be afraid to – and both cornerbacks are. They're, I mean, gosh, what's his, what's his face said? It's natty or bust, man. So, I love the corners. You've I seen think, the – oh, go ahead, sorry. No, Finn, go ahead. I was going to say, you've seen the intensity change since Igman Nosen got there, like you were talking yes. about. Yes, he is, yes. He's physical. I yeah. love his physical play. Um, and so I, I went with him because he was like, you are not going to throw a touchdown on us. And if you the one touchdown that they did throw, because everything else was rushing touchdowns, the one touchdown that was a pass was over the middle on a slant, you know, so it wasn't on those corners. Those no. corners are for real, guys. They are absolutely for real. All right, the offensive play yes. of the game. This is going to be – this is obvious, guys, isn't it? I mean, there is one game – there was one play at, that took the breath away from everybody. Oh, man, that, yeah. is a, that is a debate, Sean. Ooh. I'll mark that down for a show, guys. Is Iggy better than Burke? I'm gonna write that down. That might I don't be, know if he's better, but he's definitely more physical. That is a great debate. Let's let's have that one one day. Uh the play of the game, I think we're all in agreement. 
JR, do you disagree? Yeah. No, dude, that was, okay. that was the best. It's a Mech Egg Buku's one-handed uh, reminder of everybody how awesome he is. And not only was it a one-handed grab on the sideline, it was an NFL catch. He dragged yes. both feet. Both feet. Yeah. Alive. That was him saying, hey, if there's any scouts out there, don't forget. Don't forget yeah. who I am. Um, all right. The defensive play of the game. I want to go first. It was the final play of the game. I was just going to ask you if it was going to be Deontay Griffin. Come on, man. Archie's grandson gets the pick, runs it back. It was a, what was it? A hundred yard return or 99 yard pick return that the entire defense came off the sideline to block for him. <laughs> Obviously. Kind, kind really, of reminiscent of last year. A little when, bit. Uh, Ar- Archie did the uh, run. <laughs> yes. I I got goosebumps, man. When I found out that that was Griffin, Archie's grandson, walk on, that got that. By the way, he's the seventh Griffin to play at Ohio State. Did you know that? Seven know that. That Griffins mean? have played at Ohio State in that family. That's incredible. Okay, now name the other six. Uh, Archie, Archie's brother. No, no, Arch, name, Archie, name. Archie's other brother. <laughs> <laughs> Archie's son. I can't. Yeah. I don't know who no, they all neither are. Neither can I. Neither can I. Uh, you agree with that, Chris? You know, I love it. I think it was a great feel-good thing. Um, for me, yeah, I thought it was right at the beginning. I thought the Jack Sawyer sack, man, just kind of set the tone for everything. He got in there and blew it up. He went right over top of Car- Carson Hinsman with that bull rush and just blew it up. Yeah. So give me Jack. Def- defensive play of the game, Jr. What do you got? Oh yeah, same one for me. When uh, when I saw him take it back and I started looking up, hey, who is that guy? Because I didn't realize it in the moment. Uh, I just I kind of looked up and and yeah, like you goosebumps because uh, I kind of. You know, I mean, when you when you're in the shoe, you feel it, right? You feel the game that's going on, but you also feel all the history of everything that's happened there and all the great players that have come through. And yeah, I mean, being in the shoe, realizing that, um, yeah, yeah, that that was a special moment. Hey, Skeeters, uh, good to have you in the house again tonight, my man. Um, go back and listen to the first part. We already addressed it. Um, to give you a quick summer summarization, we feel that we need a quarterback who, to take another step. We need one to take a step forward. We have everything in place. Everything looks good. Um, but there needs to be someone take the bull by the horns out of that quarterback room and take a step forward. Um, we saw some good things, and we saw some not so good things from the quarterback room. But everything else was was really exciting from the spring game. But good to have you here, man. Um. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we need to talk about what's going to be opening up this week. The old TP's heading our way, so we're going to talk about it. Hang tight. The OHIO Podcast is brought to you by Mastermind. Mastermind specializes in 360-degree high-definition mobile video mapping, GIS integration, and traffic safety studies. Mastermind cares about traffic safety and keeping you safe on the roadway. Visit Mastermind at OnlineMastermind.com. The chat a lot. I've been keeping my eye on the chat better tonight. The chat has been talking a lot about quarterbacks. And um, I agree with Mello number seven. I do believe Howard is going to start this season. I think that's what the coaches would prefer happen. I know that's what the donors would prefer to happen. And then I would follow that up um, by Sean saying, I think we're going to lose one quarterback in the portal. If we lose only one, that is a that is a win That's for a Ohio win. State. That is a big win for us. Um, and I think based off of what I saw and, and the conversations we had at the tailgate afterwards, I agree Lincoln Keenholz probably would be better suited – at another lower school. He's a good kid. He's a great athlete. I like him. J- JR hit the nail on the head. He needs he needs reps. But I think Lincoln Kinos could probably go back to North Dakota North and be perfect for him. And be a superstar. Be the hometown he hero. Would destroy FCS. 
if he and went you know what? North Dakota or some or of those South guys Dakota, make the yeah. NFL. No, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. He would just, I mean, he would destroy it with uh, his athleticism I, and everything else. I I wouldn't want to see him to go to Iowa, not because I was be, would be afraid that he would come back and burn us at Iowa. I just don't I think like he the, would get sh- be able to show himself at Iowa. I like the kid, and Iowa sucks. Why, why go? Why go bury yourself at a place where the offense is putrid? Hey, their their offense sucks. Tight ends and defense are okay. Sam Laporta, give Come Sam on, Laporta some respect. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh man! All right, um, guys, this is why I love the chat. Along with Archie and brothers Ray and Duncan, other family members, his son Andre and Adam and nephew Kevin. All played for the Buckeyes from OSU alumni article. Boom, there you go. There it is. That's a, Man, what a family, dude. That's insane. Um, before we dive into Portal Talk, guys, uh, here, um, Chris is going to lead us in that. I do want to thank all of you who made our launch of the College Huddle a thing this week. Uh, JR, last I looked, it was 77,000 views. Is it oh, more yeah. than that now? Yeah, that's the last time I looked, yeah. 77,000 views on our commercial. Um, I'm going to play the commercial for us real fast. I want to encourage all of you after the show, go check out thecollegehuddle.com. We have great articles written by a plethora of different people from different podcasts about their schools. You can learn so much about other schools there. Uh, Chris has got a great article there. I've got some articles there as well. Find any podcast out of the 70. Plus, you can find all the other huddle podcasts that JR is running, the Big Ten huddle, the uh, SEC huddle, ACC huddle, Big 12 huddle, the Group of Five huddle, and the College Football huddle, the, the national show. All of those, you can find the links through the YouTube link at the top right-hand corner of the website. It goes right to the YouTube channel that JR is running for the College Huddle. It's been a great collaboration with a lot of people working in the background. It was a very successful launch this week. We're looking forward to building this site throughout this summer, getting it as big as we possibly can so that when we launch in fall again, when we do, because this is kind of a soft launch, when we go big time in the fall, uh for a college football we want it to be huge i'm i'm dreaming like i'm seeing things jr with like dr pepper wouldn't that be (laughs) awesome if like dr pepper and uh the uh fansville is like the sponsor of the college huddle i think it'd be great dr pepper so it'd be awesome favorite soda let's play this quick quick commercial for you then we're gonna get into some portal talk In this new era of college football, where old-fashioned media just won't cut it, I'm proud to present a new voice for college football fans, The College Huddle, your number one source for fan-driven college podcasts. I love that map. The, the the takeover of the United States by the college huddle. I love it. Um, and it's what's we even... We already added one. <laughs> I know. What's even greater is that map's outdated. We've added two since then. Uh, what's going on, Tyler? Good to see you tonight, man. Uh, good to have you with us, my man. Um, yeah, so let's dive into some portal talk, Chris. You, you lead the ship here, man. Well, you know, obviously, um, you, you we've heard already Dallin Hayden's jumping in. Uh, Lincoln Keenholz, we suspect he's going to be jumping in. Big question is, who else do we think is going to be jumping in? Uh, you know, if you'd read my, if you've had a chance to read my article that I uh, posted earlier this week, I think we've got a few guys who are probably at least considering the option. Now, most of these guys are not starters. Uh, most of them are more depth guys right now. But you've got guys who I think. Uh, Jaden Ballard, I think, is definitely one guy who is somebody who could possibly jump in the portal, uh, along with two other receivers in Kojo Antwi and Young Grays. I think these are guys who have had uh, basically a situation where we've got a couple good guys that st- stayed around, and then we've also got in phenomenal youth uh, and a youth infusion with. Uh, of course, Jeremiah Smith coming in. We've got Brandon Ennis, who right now is hurt. 
That, depending on the severity of the injury, may keep some of these guys here. But I think it's very likely that we see two to possibly three receivers under the portal. That, guys, I think is just a danger of what we have in constantly rec- uh, recruiting just a five-star locker room. Um, these guys want to get playing time. Well, and Chris, uh, can I add real fast to yeah. that? You've got you've got a walk-on receiver that looked really good. Really good. Man. I can, mean, can I say Xavier Brendan Johnson? Sh- Brendan Schramm <laughs> is legit. Like that kid's developed, and like Brian Hartline might just say, "I don't care that he doesn't have the scholarship; he's better." Yeah, I, I think we're going to have an attitude this year, Eric. Out of all of our coaches, it's an attitude that Coach Glock brings, and that is the best players are going to play. I don't care how many stars you got besides your name. And if that's the case, you could see some of these guys drop out of the way. Another likely transfer I saw uh, on the offensive side of the ball is possibly Enoch uh, Viamani. He's a guy who has not looked good in his last few appearances. A guy who's in his final year of eligibility. If he wants to play ball somewhere and wants to get significant time, I think he's uh, somebody who's an option. Um, So that was kind of my offensive side of the ball. Do you guys have anything else that you'd like to add? I I agree with all of that, actually. I think a lot of people are saying Jaden Ballard, but I don't think Jaden Ballard is going to transfer. He was in with the ones. Uh, he was in over Jeremiah Smith, which, um, you know, that could be a thing or two, but everything Day says about him says that he's improving. Uh, and, I, and I've heard that he's going to most likely get snaps this year because he's proven himself as more than just a deep threat. They like his deep threat ability, and they want that on the field. Uh, but he's proven himself to be more than just that kind of guy. Uh, unfortunately, one guy that I said earlier uh, in a video that I did uh, for the Voice of College Football uh, is Keon Grays is a possible wide receiver that we could see moving on. Just he's kind of buried in the depth chart. You don't hear a whole lot about him. Bryson Rogers tried it last year and then he came back. Uh, Keon Grays might might move on. We'll see what happens there. Defensively. I had a couple of guys that – just a couple of bigger names that, that popped to mind, um, one of them being Kenyatta Jackson. I think – and I hate the thought of this, but I think there is a big pile of NIL cash out there somewhere for Kenyatta Jackson. That combined with the fact that we saw Edric Houston come in and really, really look good. They're going to have a hard time keeping that guy off the field as well. So I think some of these guys are going to lose some of their snaps. So I think that is a possibility with Kenyatta Jackson. And his, again, is not a lack of talent. It's not going to be a lack necessarily of play, of, of significant playing time. I just feel like he's somebody that he is, dare I say, he is someone who um, – is very likely to be tampered with. Oh yeah. The family members are going to get phone calls. A lot yeah. of these guys are going to have phone calls this week from their, their family members anyways. And, and then one other that came to mind and, and I hope it doesn't happen, but he's got what one year of eligibility left. And that's Jihad Carter. He is in the uh, defensive backfield that is just so stacked this year. I think that he's going to end up lost in the shuffle. That man started at Syracuse two years ago. Yeah, started. I don't know. I don't know right now that he is any better than two deep, if not in the three deep at safety right now. He might be one of the. Uh, and Ryan Day admitted such guys that there's going to be conversations that are had. They're tough conversations, but they need to be had. Hey, we made it through spring practice. Here's where we see you on the depth chart. And that's You're, good. I commend Day for having. Yes, that, that needs that there. There needs to be some some truth talk, you know. If in today's environment, in today's culture, in college football, where you can leave and get in the portal and not have to wait a season to transfer, there, you know, coaches can do it, and these coaches need to be honest with these players. Yeah, absolutely. You're probably not going to play, but that that same thing is, you know, that the 
at the same time, they don't want to lose all their depth either. Yeah. So there needs they need to walk a fine line there when they have these conversations. But but you look at you you look at the position of defensive back, and we are so stacked, and it's a combination of returning talent and a great 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 youth infusion. And you, you've got, you know, for a fact, you're going to have, barring a transfer or an injury, you're going to have Caleb Downs for two years. Uh, you, you know, you're going to have um, the young kids that just came in. Some of the guys who, who came in as corners could, could easily add five pounds, 10 pounds, and play safety. Um, we've got such depth and versatility in the defensive backfield. I just don't know if there's a home for Jihad Carter right now. JR, you're the man in the know. Have you heard of any others that may be uh, on the way out? Uh, yeah, I, Jihad Carter's definitely, um, I think, going to go in, and I don't blame at all for that. Uh, Kenyatta, I don't think, will go in. Um, his father was pretty adamant on social media with people commenting on his post, which just leave the parents alone. Let them be on social media. <laughs> yeah, know, Maybe don't bother yeah. up there. Uh, he was pretty adamant that he feels like uh, Kenyatta's going to have a good year and, and will take over next year so unless somebody just tampers and really throws him a bag which could very well happen i think he has plans to stay um you know i was worried about cj hicks but looks like he's found himself a little bit of a role now um a possibly another linebacker but it feels like those guys are pretty set to uh to come in in their normal rotation of their years to come in and play there. Um, <coughs> Sunny, I saw some people saying Sunny Styles look a little looked a little ejected or ejected, dejected, dejected. that he uh, uh, was with the twos. Um, but I think he's going to be fine. I don't know. Maybe he was just having a, buff, a rough day or something like that. Uh, but on the defensive side, I don't really see anybody of concern. I'm with you guys. If it is anybody, it's just going to be another depth piece. I haven't heard anything about anybody. Um, but that's not uncommon because these guys do kind of try to keep that stuff for themselves because they don't want to, you know, not be with the team. I mean, look look at what's down yeah. Hayden. Yeah, I mean, exactly. everybody wished him well, but he's not with his teammates anymore because yeah. he's, he's moving on. So th- those are the people that I saw as possibly going. Now, that, of course, brings up the question of who could we possibly bring, be bringing in? Um. I really feel like, honestly, if we bring anybody in, short of maybe a plug-and-play offensive lineman uh, to possibly secure up that right side, I don't know that we're going to do anything but possibly add depth pieces. Running so, back. what's that? Running back. I was just going to get to that. So, there's two running backs that I really like um, right now that are in the portal who I think would be good options. One of them would be, obviously, and I don't know that we're going to get him because I think a lot of people are going to be looking for him. He's an Ohio kid, and that's K. Ron Lynch-Adams. Uh, played at UMass, had a big year last year. I think, what, 1,300 yards, I believe, if I'm not mistaken? I think Somewhere in that range, yeah. 1,200. Uh, you know, I, I think I would love to see him come in. He's a grad. It would be a graduate transfer. Another one that I liked is – Henry Parrish Jr. from Miami. I think he would be a good system guy, almost fill the role of a Dallin Hayden um, as far as that goes. I think those are two good options at running back. Um, I also think there's two good offensive line options out there, one of those being Scott Elliott at Duke, who's a, a, a guy who could add some depth to the offensive line. The other being, and this is, would be one who has starter potential, um, that would be possibly Chad Lindbergh, an offensive lineman from Georgia. Uh, he'd be a graduate transfer, has one year of eligibility left, uh, did play 12 games last season for Georgia. You know, maybe we could say to him, hey, kid, how would you like to get another one of them things on your finger? You know, can, you know, possibly convince him to come up. And then I had to examine the possibility of what happens if we have a second quarterback leave. Because I don't know, I think either Nolan or Saiyan, if not both, and I don't think both will get redshirted, but I do see one of them getting redshirted. Should we have two leave? I, I looked at 
Uh, Colin Schley, the quarterback from UCLA, who's a grad transfer, somebody who's familiar with Chip Kelly and the way he does things. I thought that would be a good option to bring in as kind of that third experienced guy should uh, we lose a second quarterback. So that's kind of what I had as far as possibles for incoming. Any other input? I really like the Colin Schley uh, idea there. I didn't think about him, but that's a great idea. Um, I, I compiled a list of a few running backs that Ohio State might go after if they want to go after somebody young just to help. Well, they won't be. Somebody yell. Yeah. Um, guys that have had changes with their coaching staff that might be looking elsewhere are two Alabama guys and Justice Haynes and Richard Young. I think Justice Haynes would be kind of kind of a pipe dream, but you never know. Yeah. I mean, he had a change with the with the coaching staff and Nick Saban leaving, and we already got Caleb Downs, so who knows? Um, another one would be Mark Fletcher from Miami. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe he really liked what he heard before. Maybe he's you know realized that money isn't the only game out there, and that, you know Miami is where careers go to die. <laughs> You know, maybe revive your career, come to Ohio State. Uh, and the other one was uh, Jadarian Price out of Notre Dame, kind of stuck in a little mm -hmm. bit of a special teams role right now, but he was recruited by Ohio State, and Ohio State wanted him, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but unfortunately, he chose Notre Dame, and, you know, Ohio State might bring him in. He's a young guy, might get a chance next year uh, with the two older guys leaving. Hmm. Interesting. Over, under, uh, on how many guys from Ann Arbor will leave their program after their spring game. I'll set it at five and a half. Over. I go really? With I'm going to take the over, over as well. The NILs, I really think the, the checks NILs are not rolling out no still lie. from what I'm hearing. Uh, uh, okay, JR, you're in the know, man. Hit us. Dude, the NIL, the NIL stuff is no lie. I mean, there was a reason why they made that big celebration after the national championship and gave everything to um, gave everything to NIL. I mean, Jim Harbaugh's left. He's taking everybody with him. People, people are just thinking this development thing is just going to continue, which we all know what it really was. It wasn't development, but they're just they're thinking this is going to continue, and they're not they're not donating up there like Ohio state fans are because Ohio state fans are hungry for a championship and they're sick and tired of losing, uh, them up there, their, their fans aren't as hungry. They're not donating as much. And the NIL is, I mean, I don't want to disparage anybody, but you know, from what I've heard, the opinions I've heard is that they're run by some pretty shady people that people don't exactly trust. And, well, you know, Eric, and, yeah. Uh, Ohio state fans will do anything for a championship. That's what they say in Michigan. Ohio State fans would pay Michigan players to leave. Like, hey, why don't you make it up there? We'll write the check for you. Get out of there. <laughs> Brian Overs put it at 15. Wow. Could you imagine if they had 15 guys jump in the portal this week before their spring game on Fox? I hope they're all running backs. 15 every running back no I, oh, actually this is the one i want to see what would what would the michigan faithful say if will johnson jumped in the portal he won't he won't i don't think he will either but can you imagine that? that's the one You're check right, i'm sure break, was cashed it would break their hearts and i'd love it when does the hammer and bull ban happen it's the NCAA at this point. It's a and slow process. Yeah. I'm hoping something happens by the summer, but your best thing to look for is when the notice of allegations happens, which the notice of allegations happened for the uh, hamburger um, gate. Burger gate. So we might get something from that soon. I'm very curious what they're actually going to do with that. But, um, you know, we'll see. Do we think that they are so afraid of destroying the Michigan program? that they may be holding it off until after the spring portal closes. That would be shady on their part though. Yeah. And, and, and I know that the Michigan has exactly endeared themselves to the NCAA, but at the same time, you, you know, and, and 
I, I hear people say this all the time about the Big Ten. You know, the Big Ten is a better conference when, when Michigan is relevant. Do, does the NCAA look at things that way as well? No. Is it better for college football when certain blue blood programs are still somewhat we, relevant? We don't have – that might have been a thought back when – when it was just the big two and little whatever eight yeah. or ten or whatever, but now that you've got the four Pac-12, that definitely does make a juggernauts difference. here. There's no reason to think that way. Um, well, I'm not saying I ever thought that way. But... It, it's interesting. It's going to be extremely interesting. There is there is the potential that. This comes and goes and no one leaves because there's just no movement there. And I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to say that that if that were to happen, that that's a sign that everything's going to be fine there, because I don't think that that's the case. I do think that they take a step back this year, even if even if no players leave, no sanctions from the NCAA. I still believe that program takes a step back in 2024. Well, you know, Eric, you and I, we broke down that schedule uh, last week, and we struggled at one point to get them bowl eligible. Yeah, I, I know. Um, is this true, Jr.? Do you have you heard this? I've not. I don't know. I heard that. That might be something Scoop said tonight or something. I didn't watch Scoop before I came on. Um... I haven't heard that, but I'm also I haven't not heard it. Sean, do me a favor, man. Shoot me uh, shoot me a message on an article or where you heard that from. I'm in, I'm interested. I'd like to dig into that a little bit. Um, and Donald, I agree with you, 100, and I can't even what just pick a number, anything over 100. Um, I can't agree with you more on this comment. I hope they're relevant for the next 20 years. Uh, I'm one of those Ohio State fans. That I hope they lose every single game. Yes. I don't I don't care. I I can't stand I cannot stand their fan base. And and all the all the people are, oh, we need we need them to be good because it makes it makes us better. Um we don't need that for strength of schedule anymore, you Eric. Don't, you don't remember the nineties. You do you, Yeah. You, you do not want that to happen, man. So yeah. Um, I think that's going to be it tonight. I'm looking through the chat real fast. I want to see them lose their spring game, Eric. That's how bad <laughs> I want them to lose. Uh, Nick Clint, I saw one article I sent you, Eric, about Oregon State coming to the Big Ten, but haven't seen any traction on it yet. Huh. That would be hard for me to believe. That'd be great for our belligerent Beavers uh, podcast friends, but uh, I have not heard that one yet. I'm interested in that, too. Um, actually, uh, there you go, Jr. Scoop said it. <laughs> Scoop said it last week. Okay, I've been missing Scoop a little bit more lately. Nothing against them. I've just been busy at night. Uh, well, I mean, when we're running an entire uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> community, that, I mean, <laughs> that adds kinda, to it. Kind of takes some of uh, kind of takes some of that away. Which, by the way, go check that ever check that out, everybody. The collegehuddle.com look it up on twitter what's the twitter handle college huddle at college huddle yeah twitter's college huddle youtube is the college huddle podcast there you go check that out and if you if you need can't remember any of that just remember the collegehuddle.com go to the website look at it check it out find some other great podcasts there glad to be the uh ohio state podcast there glad to have all of our brethren and sister from the big 10 i think we have um we're up to 15 Big Ten podcasts. We need three more we're looking for. Um, so we'll have those by the beginning of the, of the football season, I guarantee. Who are we missing? From the Big Ten? Yeah. USC, Maryland, and that team up north. Well, let's just kick them out of the conference. Yeah, I agree. I'd be, I'm fine with that. Uh, SEC needs three more. They think they're going to beat us, but they still have to try to find Vanderbilt. Good luck. <laughs> it's our good Northwestern. Luck. We're good. <laughs> yeah, hey, our Northwestern pod, we have the number one Northwestern pod. The Westlot Pirates have been around so long, man. Everybody in Northwestern knows who these dudes are. 
and we awesome. were able we were able to get them to come to the college huddle. They are legit. They're in fact their numbers are probably better than like the two four seven guys from Northwestern. Really? Yes. Well, no, two four seven doesn't even really have like a Northwestern site. Like they have one guy dedicated to it, and he, like, there's like no activity on their message board. There you go. It's the West Slot Pirates, baby. They've got it all. Yeah. Corner lot, college huddle. It's gonna be us one day. You never know. It'd be great. All right, man. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thursday night, we'll have our call-in show. Your chance to call in, talk about the uh, spring game and anything else, any big news that comes out this week. Um, we'll be watching We'll be watching that uh, spring game from Ann Arbor Saturday. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be commenting about that next week as well. By the way, our numbers right now, fantastic, guys. Thank you so much for every single person who's jumped in. All you scoopers who came over from the scoop, good to have you guys with us, man. Appreciate all of you uh, jumping in as well this evening. We'll have some videos for you guys to check out this week, so make sure you uh, – uh, come back to our YouTube channel and check out some of the videos that uh, we put out this week. Anything else, guys, going on before we head on out of here? Nope. Nothing for me. All right. As always, be kind to one another. I owe someone's OH. Sing Carmen Ohio with all your heart. Till next time, OH. I owe. Go Bucks.